Hello and welcome back to Civilization Beyond Earth Rising Tide Expansion. Again, this is a tutorial. We're trying to uh, just get started in the game, kind of figure things out, figure out what we need to do in certain situations. We have taken a look at one particular way of starting out the game as we go for virtues, as we go for technologies. You know, and there's many ways to go about it, but the idea is how do you make up a plan that you want? That you're going to go with what kind of virtues what type of technologies do you need because there's a lot of synergy between the technologies between the virtues between the character traits of your particular leader so you want to be thinking about all those things when you are building up your civilization so my way is not necessarily going to be the right way the best way the correct way whatever it's just a way that i picked and i, I typically use it quite often um, there are some other strategies that you can go with. I don't know which one is the best, but anyways, we're, we're we're playing here, and I think we were talking about war last time, so let's go ahead. Let's see here. We had some spies doing some work. Ooh, we picked up an alien manticore and an artifact. I like the artifact. The manticore is not quite as exciting for me. However, he could take up a defensive position in town. I think that's a pretty good idea. Maybe we'll start sending him up that way. I like it. Let's see here. What's this here? We established a network. Okay, okay, okay. What do we got going on with our soldiers down here? I think they're resting up. I think after they rest up, we might start heading back as we're going to start building towards our war. And I'm thinking that we're probably going to go after Chung Su down here. And again, we're getting insulted because of our our health. Let's see, our ship is being attacked by an alien sea dragon. And we're pretty tough now. We actually took him down. Picked up 28 science. Pretty happy with that. Let's see, you're sitting in some miasma, which is not, not cool, dude. Not cool. So let's see, how long can you last? If you make it to there, we can get you out of there. Move that way. Let's see here. You have two expedition modules left. Where can I send you? That's relatively safe. We could go look up here to see what's going on. Maybe we will send our alien sea dragon up that way as well. What are you, what are you doing? Okay, you're going to start working that fungus. Plus two food, minus one production. I think that's probably a way to go. I think we're going to go ahead and get you going that way as well. To run Breaker. Do our Smokey and the Bandit thing. Except for right now we got our Smokey and our Bandit backwards. Although, he's probably more like the Snowman, isn't he? He's a little bit tougher with the big truck. Okay, our... Our Naval Melee Unit is looking pretty tough. So maybe what we will do, I want to test something out actually. Okay, you go on the same tile as him, so they are now occupied the same tile. I'm going to have you do nothing. Oh yes, I love nine diplomacy per turn. We'll take it. Thank you. And I think Vanguard went up one in population. Let's see, we want to go ahead and say yes to that. I think we'll just go ahead and go with the recommendation for our other slot. What are we currently building? We are building an auto plant four turns. We have a laboratory in four turns. We have a trade convoy one turn. Let's see here. What can we have you do? Just keep on moving, I guess. Obviously, you're going to need to get some healing in. Okay, our trade convoy. We could trade with Axiom. But there's not much benefit there. It's looking pretty weak, actually. We could do the highest energy delta. Again, that's going to tell us, you know, what's a good result for us and a not so good result for the person that we're trading with. That's pretty good. With liqueur, let's see what else do we want to look at. Palatine, we can pick up an extra for culture. I'm not sure that that's really going to fit into our plans quite as well. So let's go ahead and go with liqueur. That should help us out. You're going to keep on moving. 
Okay, so now what I wanted to try out... I want to actually have them go straight into this. Because there could be an alien thing there. Because that's what was there initially. But what I really wanted to try is see if they're going to take the same path. Now, why aren't they going to take the same path? That makes no sense to me. Why aren't they taking the same path? That's kind of weird. I don't quite understand that. Yes, we'll take the, the nine per turn. Thank you. Yes, you are very eloquent. Okay. What do we want to start building here? As I normally say, my favorite option is to start off with the old earth relic so they can actually build up some of their culture. You know, I think we're going to hold off on doing any purchasing because we are, need to look at units that we want to use to go into war. And maybe we actually want to save that alien and bring him to war with us. All right. So what they are doing is they are saying, hey, we seem to get along pretty well. We have, you know, some of them, I don't know, their, their traits could be similar. Oh, what do you know? They do have the, the science uh, gaining uh, trait by killing aliens or whoever. So, anyways, they want to become cooperating with us. The step up from cooperating is going to be are going to be allies. If they became allies with us, we could potentially have them go to war with us. That is an option. I doubt I'm really going to focus on it because they they may just get in our way, and I don't know if they're going to have a whole lot to do with us. It looks like Chung Su and and Pack. It's not Pack, is it? No, that's not even our neighbor. Because this is... Who is this? Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, the Pan-Asian Cooperative. Okay, so never mind. I don't really don't really care now. Not paying attention. Who's who? Which, that's actually one of the things that throws me off the most about... about the civilization beyond Earth is I get so used to the color schemes that they use in Civilization V that when I play this, I just have no idea who is who. I'm, I'm starting to pick it up somewhat. <laughs> you know, I've only been, been playing 100 hours or so, so... It comes along eventually. You may need to heal before we go running through all this miasma. And you have a trade opportunity so we can give Vandar, Vanguard plus three production. It doesn't help Central a whole lot though. Could also trade with Palatine which is not that great. You know a lot of these trades here are not that interesting for us. We may go with Palatine but you know let's go ahead and give Vanguard the bonus. And the other thing I want to check to see is why are these all on auto renew? We don't want that. That's one thing you kind of want to keep an eye on. If if you want to micromanage your trades, if you really don't care, you know, just leave it on auto renew and it's going to be good. So I think we're going to start sending you down this way. I don't know why I was thinking I wanted to do the other thing. We're going to start sending you away. It's somewhat risky to send our trade away, or not our trade, but our soldiers away from our cities. But I think we're going to go pretty full board into our war when we start it. We've got a little ways to go. Okay, your colony has so many cities to visit, it reminds me of our one-time home. I'm assuming he's referring to Old Earth. He needs to learn it's time to stop reminiscing and it's time to start making this place our home. Okay, why are you stopping? Did I have you building a road, or are you building a mine? Let's see, six turns for a mine. Yeah, maybe they just finished a road, I don't know. We'll have them continue building a road. Let's go ahead, we're going to keep on working back. Nope, I saw some place where we could have an explorer work. Which is not a bad idea. Okay, so the Hydra Coral is gone. Let's see here. Do we what do we want to work? You know, maybe we could actually work the Firaxite. Do we actually have that technology though? We do, so we're gonna go start working that since you are running out of things to work. I think that's a good idea. 
So now what we want to do is look at the potential ways that we can build up our military to make an attack. So cruisers are rather expensive. Let's go see how much they would actually cost to purchase. Let's see, a cruiser would cost 800 energy, which we don't have right now. Or it would cost 1,200 diplomat diplomatic capital, which we don't have. So that may not be what the, the route that we go with. But I think we probably need to start building one. And hopefully we can get that done sooner than that. Let's see, you could start building something for our war as well. Maybe we'll have you build a missile rover what a, or something else may be better. A water refinery would be good. You know, we need to, we need to build units. If we want to do this, we need to be bold and start working towards it. That's one thing that is actually a big weakness of mine, as you could tell when we had a zillion aliens around Central earlier in the game. Sometimes I try to wait till I get to a certain point before moving forward. In the higher difficulty games, you actually need to say, hey, I really want this building, but I really need to build some, some soldiers, otherwise that building doesn't mean anything. So you kind of need to temper your goals of getting certain buildings with the idea that, you know, maybe you need to do some other things first and try to, you know, balance things out. And that's actually one of the reasons why I like going with the production because production you can actually convert into any of the other types of resources with the exception of the uh, of the healthiness and that's one thing that it can't do we'll just have you camp out on top of him we'll go up the alert so I don't have to worry about that we could have you look around maybe a little bit we're gonna start sending you back But that's actually one of the toughest things in any of these types of games is knowing when to, you know, just say, hey, we need to build some soldiers and then try to jump forward by going to war. And some people are great at it. You know, some people just want to go to war immediately. They want to go ahead and, and do the Zerg thing where they're just sending people right away. And some civilizations within games are better at it than others. You know, like in my... In my uh, Civilization V Celts Let's Play, the Huns went after me right away, and they they took one of my cities easily because they are they're built for it. They you know they just are that type of strategy driven, or they're focused on taking over cities early. It's what kind of what they're designed to do. Okay, so what do we want to do with you? You probably need to focus on health because we're going to take a huge health hit from taking over a couple cities. And my plan is that we're going to take over Dongye and Jiangsung simultaneously. Which may not work out perfectly in that regard, but it's basically what I want to do. So we're going to get you over. You guys are going to start healing when you get close. You are going to continue moving. Which is a little awkward when we have this guy in the way, so we'll just take it slow. Trade convoy, where are we sending you? We could send you to Central. It helps Axiom more than anybody. I think we're going to go with that. A little bit extra production is never a bad thing. So we're going to start sending you back. And again, that was a pretty dangerous move when you're trying to clear four spaces, but I, I figured there was no aliens around. See, so you will move. That's probably about as far as you're going to go. I don't want to set them off thinking, hey, we're under attack. So if we stay in our own territory, they shouldn't get upset about us having some military units around. Which we don't want to go. We'll go down this way. can avoid some miasma. It's always good to stay out of the miasmas, as you've probably seen. I'm going to send you on to the road. Who's, who's next? We need to get you moving. That's right, you were down here just camping out. We need to do something with you. Camping out is not uh, the best strategy, probably. I guess we can move you forward. Oh, there's an alien nest. Let's have you fortify there. Maybe you can pick up some easy science for us. 
So we are picking up plenty of diplomatic capital. We are going to be able to actually purchase something. So, you know, it was kind of looking like it maybe it might be 20 turns before we go to war, but I think it's gonna, we're probably going to go as soon as this cruiser is built. Right now is my plan. I think that's not too bad of an idea. Let's see what else can we do. Oh, I guess you could go build a farm. You could go work on the build a mine there on the titanium would be good. You're going to continue moving forward. And I bet we just stepped on his spot. So when you're actually playing against another player, you probably want to be. Why did I build my road that way? I thought I would want to go this way. I think I made a slight mistake. Oh well. We'll make do. I think you'll start building a road there. Oh, yeah, you're getting jammed up. They don't seem to travel on the roads as well as a regular unit. I'd never noticed that before. And then when we go to attack Chung Su, we're going to blame the aliens. We're going to say they, they mine melted us and that they made us go to war. Build two old earth relic buildings. We did that. So now we need to launch one of any orbital unit. Interesting. We don't think I don't think we have any orbital units to launch. So what I think we're going to do is we're probably going to stop here and heal. These two will come along the back side when we initiate our battle. Okay, that's no longer there. That's good. Okay, so we do have an alien popping up. So we want to make sure we're on top of this. So you can go here and shoot him pretty good. Probably could have moved into town and then shot him. Also probably really doesn't make that big a difference. And I'm not going to use my bombard because we don't get any experience for that. And I'm all about the XP. Making our soldiers better. It's my big plan. Alien nest discover. Where did we discover this? Right on top of this. Oh, this is ugly. We really could use a soldier up here. What can we do? That was a slight mistake. I probably shouldn't have moved everybody away from this. So, do we actually want to purchase a soldier? You know, not really. We could purchase a missile rover for 500 bucks. 500 energy. I said 500 energy, right? Um, we could also do the water refinery. That would actually give us an extra three production, an extra three... Well, it could give us potentially three food after it upgrades. That could be an idea. Let's go ahead and lock that in. Might as well lock that one in as well. Wow, this is a tough choice. What do we want to do here? Could also do a combat rover. No, let's go ahead and do the missile rover. I'm going to want the missile rover anyways. And having two of them is probably a good deal. So we do, we're going to have some protection with that. We probably need to get these guys out of here. Otherwise they may be eaten by the alien. You're going to rest up, and maybe we'll send... You know, maybe we'll send you... Well, I guess I have to get rid of this guy first. Can you shoot him? Yes, you can. XP for the mana core. Does he even get XP? He does. No, he didn't. He didn't. So we, there's no, That's good to know. Aliens are not going to get XP for us. It's always good to know what, what, what can work and what won't work and all that good stuff. Let's go take a look here. Not seeing any type of offensive units that may cause us problems. I wonder if there's an alien nest back there as well. It's a possibility. So I am saving our diplomatic capital to purchase another cruiser. So then we would have three. You're going to sit tight. You will go ahead and move forward. 
Let's see, yes, I will need you to move forward as well. You know, I can move you closer. Oh, what are all these guys doing around the African Union? Oh, they're thick as thieves over there. Wonder what they got going on. Let's see, what could I do? I could start building a road right here and then up. You could, I guess, move forward here. And you could get you back to working on your mine. Up here, I think we are just going to go ahead and go with the Saito Nursery. Nine turns. Not bad, we can get working on that. So let's see, we did complete an expedition and we get 12 affinity XP towards purity. So our purity is now yes, higher than our supremacy, which is not really the plan. Not the plan, man. It looks like we can keep on going that direction. Okay, we want you to go as well. Okay, so they've been moving around a little bit. So you are just a gunner. What can you do for shooting him? Why aren't you uh, highlighting? Okay, so they completely wiped them out. This guy's not going to be able to do anything, so we'll start sending him south. Let's see. I think we're just going to go ahead and send you over that way. You're going to go ahead and get down here. What are you guys doing? Kind of curious. What are you going to do? I think maybe you are the one that's going to have to go do the road. I think I started building the road there, but I guess it doesn't really make a difference where else I go. So these guys are just going to get a generic reward or a generic upgrade. Let's go with the plus 20 flanking over the fortified units. So, you know, one of the things that I think about when I look at these choose a perk options, flanking, chances are you may be around another one of your your friends or one of your other units so that's always good attacking a fortified unit how often are you gonna be doing that you know you really don't know it's kind of a question mark this you can set up this you can't this you're just it's like if you come upon that situation yeah you'll get the bonus but this is something that you can actually control and so what we're gonna to want to do and with flanking is basically you're gonna to want to have an enemy unit in between so there's not really gonna be I guess you can have exact opposites, but this game actually has a pretty generous flanking position-wise. And now flanking becomes huge when you're playing like tabletop games where you're playing on grids and maps and all that kind of stuff. So they, they, these guys can choose our uh, submarine, which we don't have a submarine. Can choose between getting an attack bonus on coast terrain or ocean terrain. I'm going to go with coast terrain just because if our city is threatened and we do have submarine, I think that bonus is going to be a little bit more common. And that's sometimes what you want to do when you're looking at those perks is, you know, which one am I going to encounter more? Which one do I have control over? You know, and it also depends on the map and who you're playing. If you're playing other players, you know, maybe it's a, a, a different strategy. You always have to think, you know, what's going to be more common and what's going to be more useful or what's, what's going to come into play at a critical situation. You know, I guess it could also be another big factor. Okay, so you're good. So you're just going to sleep. You're going to continue moving down. So two turns for that. Four turns for our cruiser. I think we can go ahead and get you moving a bit. Probably to right there. Looks like we're going to end up with a bit of a log jam going on. I okay, guess so they have a solar collector, they have a combat rover, which does no good in an aquatic city. I guess maybe it would it could be their patrol unit within the city or something. I don't know. It's a little bit ridiculous. Oh, we didn't go and take this out. Let's see if we can take it out with a worker. That would actually make me laugh. And also make me look like an idiot because I didn't go ahead and send my soldier up there to clear it out to get us some XP, to get us some easy science. Okay, it would help if I hit next turn. Vadim Koslov has made peace with Kavitha Thakur. You're still down here fighting. Keep on forgetting about you, sorry. 
but you're doing well. You're really doing well for yourself. Okay. So you're just going to go ahead and move a little bit closer. You, you're just kind of checking things out, seeing what's going on. Trying to figure out why those guys are all there. These guys are moving over here to get another expedition going. So they can pillage. Gotta like that. The worker picking up 90 science for us. I think we'll go ahead and start building a road from here to here. Since I've been wanting to do that, I just keep on kind of futzing around with it. Okay, so you're going to go ahead. Do you want to build a barge or a farm? What well, looks like it's a better option. So they got lots of food production there. Some food production, some food production. We'll lock that one in. You know, we may need another food production. Looks like they're probably going to be pretty strong as far as general production. Which would mean the barge is probably out. Let's go with a farm. Nothing wrong with going with farms. So I could have actually been buying things as we go along, but it has not been all that important as we're biding our time. Look at these aliens, they're just totally upset with us. Our explorer, our workers are getting us XP. Pretty impressive. Okay, you're going to go ahead and move over there. What was this? Our agent failed to steal any science from Deep Castle. Okay. What are we going to do? Let's try stealing science again from Mandira. And what could you do? We could try to steal defenders. So typically what you can do with your spies is you can try to steal energy. You can try to steal science. Or, and again, there's a bunch of other, bunch of other ones that you actually need to build up to try to get. So like the, the coup d'etat is a coup d'etat. Stage a coup d'etat and claim control of, that, of the city for yourself. This will declare war if successful. So we can't even attempt it. But it's kind of funny. There's a dirty bomb option. There's a colossal strike. Sabotage. Hack satellite. Steel technologies is a pretty decent one. A propaganda campaign. Recruit defenders, which would be, you know, taking some of their soldiers and having them and then, and then joining you. But I think what we're, what we're going to do is just go with steel science. I don't know if it really makes that big of a, a difference. Oh, and we do have a new spy, which has probably been sitting there. Again, you got to always check down here to see what they're doing. You're seeing that I'm making mistakes, you know, so always try to play a little bit better than I'm playing and pay attention just a little bit more. So let's see, where do we have our spies going already? So we're in Mandira, we're in Deep Castle, so... You know, we probably won't double up on those particular locations. We could it. You know, if we go to Jing Song, although we're planning on taking that over, that's probably not a good option. We could go to Liqueur. What do we want to do? What do we want to do? Let's just go ahead and send him to Liqueur. I think that's alright. It's not really that important. It could be important if you want to plot something against them, or if you want to try to weaken an opponent. You know, that, that would definitely make sense. It's just not that important for what uh, I have going on right here. Let's go ahead and pick up the Vivarium so we can build our city up a little bit more. Where are we at here? So we got a little bit to go. Oh, look at this. We may take a roundabout way because I don't know if our Sea Dragon is going to be tough enough to withstand attacks on multiple fronts or whatever you would want to call it let's see I can go ahead and move there so we have more than enough to go after Dongye the question now is Jiang Sung in fact I don't know if it's even worth me committing all these soldiers to Dongye or not it's a little bit a little bit overkill actually but I will get another cruiser. Is that what they are now? Yeah, they're cruisers. So we've gone from gunboat to cruiser. And we're actually going to purchase our third one so we can get going.
And as you can see, usually when you start thinking about war, you know, you don't go right into it. It typically takes a little bit of time, a little bit of planning, you know, trying to figure out exactly what you want to do. So I know I'm kind of itching just to move in and start making things happen. Maybe I should send you around so we don't have a traffic jam. I think that sounds like a good idea. Maybe send the alien with you who moves really slow. I really don't want to go stepping on the miasma, but we may not have a choice. So if you just go over there. I think you are going to sit tight. We're getting there. We're definitely getting there. <coughs> Excuse me. Our explorer, he is a champ. Okay, come on, Sea Dragon. You show this little ripper who's boss. There you go. I knew you could do it. Picking up 20 science for your new favorite race. Right? Why not? By the way, I don't, I don't believe that aliens actually end up taking damage from Miasma, so when I send them in, if I put my alien on the Miasma, that is probably a good use for them. Let's see, you're probably going to come... Well, you might have to go way over there, which means... I may want to have you move. So what you can do is say if you want these two to switch, if I click there, they're not going to switch. But if I click the guy that's fortified, then they'll switch. It's kind of kind of somewhat useful. I think we're going to go ahead and move you into position, despite there being miasma. You, I may hold tight. So we do have our next cruiser built gonna go ahead and say yes to that deal we need to build something else here what do we want to build what do we need to build I don't know if we really need to build anything the water refinery would be pretty huge actually we're almost level 10 you know it's a toss-up between water refinery drone command and attack jet so we're not gonna need another colonist because we're gonna be taking up something over so maybe let's go with the water refinery. That'll help our growth and our production. The drone command would have been better. I just picked the water refinery because it was a little bit less expensive. So it looks like you need to heal just a little bit. And I probably should have purchased this unit. I will definitely do it on this next turn. So that we have three cruisers. We have our cutter. He might start moving in. Well, geez. They just keep on coming. Okay. So now you need to start moving in, as do you. Maybe have you go right there. <coughs> so they maybe, maybe they think something's up. They know we're out here. I don't know if it's worth hiding anymore. Maybe one more turn. One more turn. The classic cry of the civilization game player. One more turn. Okay, we're going to pick up the cruiser with our diplomatic capital. So we now have three. Let's see, you can go ahead and move up. You guys are going to go ahead and jump on this. Let's see, now you can go ahead and move forward. I think is alright. We're going to have you actually move... Oops. We're going to have you move back. What can you do? Let's have you chill out right here. We're going to have you move forward like that. You're going to be into the miasma. You're actually going to move forward as well. Is that what I want to do? Why not? Let's see. You know, I would like to move him forward, but it's probably... It's not even worth it. Because they need to actually set up to attack just like a catapult does. Or a trebuchet, rather. Or actually, both of them need to. So he's going to be able to move, probably. 
No, he's gonna be able to move and just get into range, but he's not gonna be able to do anything. So we will just sit tight. He is retreating smartly. So they are praising our our covert operations. I believe on this turn we are going to declare war. Start to get things going. Basically, you'll, t you'll move in. It'll take a turn where you're actually going to, you know, get some attacks on you. You're going to set up. You know, get ready to do your thing. So let's see. You're going to go there. Well, that nest is not really that worrisome. You go there. You will go in there. Let's see, you will move there. What can you do? You know, you kind of are like the odd man out. I don't know what to do with you. So we're going to go ahead and declare war. Jiang Sung. Change relationship. War. Yes. My troops have not yet begun to fight. I will not allow this to end before they have shown what they can do. All right. We have declared war. Because that's what we do. Let's see. What's this a hill? It is a hill. That is annoying. Annoying. Which means we're basically going to have to get on top of the hill to make attacks. Can you actually move forward? I could actually move you forward. You'll be able to shoot from there. I'm actually going to move you up on the hill anyways. They will actually probably try to uh, go into a melee attack with him. At least I would. I think that's a pretty good strategy. So we're just going to slow play these guys moving into position. They are going to be outside of the range where they can be attacked, which is alright. Let's see, you... I'm actually going to hold you back even more so than them. They will actually focus fire on the melee units, because the melee units can take the city. You can bar bombard the city, and you're never going to take it by doing it. You always need a melee unit to take a city. So that's always something to keep in mind, is you need one healthy... Well, not even healthy. You just need one melee unit with over 50% of its health to end up taking a city. Okay, this guy is building one goofy road route. Not very happy about his pathing options. That's why I micromanage. That's why I micromanage. Because they do stupid stuff. Okay, let's see what type of attack they actually put on us. So they're going to bombard our guys in heavy cover, standing in Miasma, and shoot at them. So see what they're doing. They're going after the rent, after the melee unit. You know, this guy's probably going to have to be the one to take the city, but I have all these ranged units, but they can't take the city. They can make it so my, my melee unit can take it. So, you know, that's, that's one thing that you'll see a lot of. So sometimes you may want to bring along multiple melee units. And I, I think it's Civilization Five. You know, they'll often say, you know, you need four melee units to take a city. <coughs> Don't worry, I'm gonna pull through. Gonna pull through. Okay, so we do have lots of uh, good ranged attacks. So you can either hit, go down here and hit your B key for your bombard, or you can just right click. And these are not nearly as strong as I was hoping for. Let's see, you're going to do the same, so we're going to set up for a ranged attack. Go ahead, blast them. We'll probably actually end up losing that rover to this uh, combat rover. Missile rover to combat, combat rover. For some reason, that seems kind of weird. Okay, so we're going to start blasting him, bombarding him with our ranged naval units, and why am I even worrying about this? One of my pet peeves. Yeah, you just clear miasma. We're in a war! We are at war! You don't bother me when we're at war. Okay, so since they don't actually gain any XP, we're going to save them for last. Go ahead and go with our ranger units. You go ahead and plow into them. Oh boy! What are we going to do? So we're going after two cities at once. 
shows you how impressive that these cruisers are. I mean, they are taking down the city faster than these rovers were. Look at that. So we can actually take out Jiang Sang. Can I do that? One, two, three, four. Yep, so I was in the right position. So they can actually go take that. But here, am I going to have to actually putz around a turn? Let's see. My marine might not survive if I attack. What can you do? So this marine here can actually go in here and take the city. Which one should we take first? Let's go ahead and take a... Uh, Jiang Jiang Sang first. So we're gonna go ahead there, fight their non-existent units. I probably should have taken out that and left it. So we want to create a puppet. We're gonna pick up seven unhealth. If we annex, we're gonna pick up fourteen unhealth, which will put us at nineteen. We you know we might have to create a puppet initially. Let's do that. And then if you move in. You will take that, and then we will have to make that same decision. The dossier on you did not accurately reflect your resourcefulness. Well played. And he called us a name, Wejukin, which I have no idea what that means, but I imagine it's something. So it looks like we have totally wiped them out, and they are going to give us... So basically, when, you, when someone goes to negotiate peace... You're going to go by the war score. So our war scores, we have won 778 to 0. And since they have no more cities, they're out of the game. So you can pick up 778 points worth of sciences, which they have here. These are sciences that they have that we don't have as of yet. We could also pick up energy. We could also pick up diplomatic capital. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and take a look at these and see if they are anything that we may want. Because we're not going to be able to get all of them, but we can get probably, what's that, two of the sciences, you know, yeah, probably just two of them, and then some energy or, or some uh, diplomatic capital. I wonder if we actually get affinity XP for these two. That's, that's something I'm not sure of. So the alien life forms would be a way to get some uh, buildings unlocked for getting us culture and capital. The Station Sentinel is an orbital unit that you would throw over the top of a station and it would increase your trade yields with them. However, uh, since I'm not making any trades with any of the stations, it's somewhat devalued. You know, I kind of like the geophysics. We would actually be able to see geothermal so we could work that. And also we'd pick up the tidal turbine, which we can use for an aquatic cities, which is basically like... Uh, what what the thorium reactor is kind of what it's sort of like. So we could also pick up the planetary survey, but that's not that's not worth much. That's probably pretty easy for us to get alone. So what we may do is just go ahead and pick up the alien life forms. Looks like we have 58 points left to play with. Let's go ahead and maximize our energy. And then we're good. We we have discovered. Let's see. What do we want to do? So if we raise it, boy, this doesn't decrease our health by a lot. If we create a puppet, we would gain nine on health. I was like, so we're at 21 on healthiness. Great job, right? 29 or 21 on healthiness. <clears throat> I'm telling you. Just hoping I can pull through. So if we are at 21 unhealthiness. Let's see here. Minus 42% growth in cities. Minus 42% speed towards outpost growth. Minus 16% culture. Minus 11% science in cities. Uh, minus 1% production in cities. So, you know, we have lots of unhealthiness. So that means we're going to actually have to do something about that. We're going to have to work towards fixing that particular problem. And by wiping out them completely, we have actually got rid of all their soldiers. They have totally vanished off of the map. So we need to figure out some solutions for the problems we have created for ourselves. 
And I'm also hoping they don't go after Vanguard, thinking that we're weak since we're moved down. But it looks like we just picked up two cities that are bigger than Vanguard. You know, so that's not a bad way to go. And I probably should have just raised one of these cities. It would have created a lot of unhappiness or unhealthiness in the short run. But there you go. We won a war. And I don't know, you know, we were very quick, very efficient in how we did it. You know, we, we ended up taking a lot more unhealthiness than I really wanted to do. But eventually it'll, it'll go down a little by little. Okay, Kraken scares me a little bit there. Let's see, our gunner. Is our gunner standing in Miasma? Probably is. So what we're going to do is we're going to move, start moving you back out of the way. You know, you two could switch. You could move up there. That would work. You will stay here and heal. I think you're going to go ahead and get out of here. What can we have happen here so our cutter can go ahead and heal? We have a new worker. We're going to put our worker onto our caviar and start fixing that up nice. Let's see, this gunman. You know, we may potentially put you and Jiang Sang. See, our cruisers, you know, we could go up there and try to take on that Kraken, but right now, what I'm concerned about is somebody going a little crazy, somebody getting liberal on us, saying, oh, you should not have gone to war, we're going to go to war against you. Because someone else can stick up for themselves, that type of thing. You know, we are kind of being a bully by going and pounding on somebody. You could say. What do we want to do here? So we do we want to build anything or just want to get over here and maybe build a road? Let's see. So I would need to build a road in one of these spots, probably up here. Is where I would like to start my road. Now what do we want to do? We need something to help our our health, but I'm not seeing not seeing that solution popping up. Go with for the pharma lab, which would help us out. That's probably the way we're gonna go. Just you know, it's gonna be rough for a, little, for a little bit. Our next science that we go after may have to be a health oriented science. You really don't want to be at this much negative. It's it's kind of bad. But we did take over two cities. So our strength is greatly improved and these African Union combat rovers are really kind of weird because they can't actually attack our city even if they're at war with us a land-based melee unit can't attack from water onto an aquatic based city so they're like circling the wagon and they can't do anything it's kind of weird it's a little bit awkward you could say where do you want to send you be nice if we could do something about ha our healthiness. You know, we could actually boost our culture and try to pick up some some health that way. I totally forgot that we could actually do that. I'm gonna move you out onto that that city. I think you're probably good there. I'll move you over here. Have you heal? You can keep on moving. I think you'll sit here and heal. You're going to go ahead and build a farm, I think. You are going to do a route. We're making roads, and hopefully it's going to be a straight road, not like this guy who's building all over creation. Upsetting me. Anyways, so now you kind of see how going to, going to battle works. You know, and I did not have to go doing, doing what I did with attacking both of them at the same time, taking them both out in the same turn. That's kind of more for my own amusement than anything. 
Now sometimes it's fun to try taking out four cities at the same time just to see if you can coordinate it and if you, you know, estimated everything right that you'd have everything you need to actually make it work. And I thought we had overkill with Dong Ye. And Jiang Song, I thought we were going a little bit light. It just shows you how tough those cruisers are. I mean, those cruisers are make or break units for the game. I mean, they're huge. And even if I'm fighting against a coastal city, you want to go in with them. I mean, you can wipe out just about anybody with the right number of those. They are very powerful. Okay, what is your problem now? So I suppose I told you to do something and you can't do it now. Yeah, you go ahead and build a road that way. Let's see, I think you'll just sit tight. We're going to do a lot of sit sitting tight. Okay, yay. Okay, somehow I thought I had somebody else selected. I thought I had you selected. Let's move you into the city. Let's have you move over this way. What's up with all those rovers? They're kind of annoying me. Don't get what their deal is. I mean, were they considering a war against them and now they're just kind of just hung out to dry? Kind of seems that way. Let's go ahead and go into here. We can end up picking up some science there. And then we probably should think about ending this video. We won a war. It was a very quick war. Typically when the AI declares war against you, you know, you have to have time to react and, you know, the war can drag on. And then if you also want to get some retribution in it, what's this one here? Leash alien. Okay. How does that work? Let's try to leash in the alien. Let's do that to him. So now we gain control of them. The question is, what can we do with them? I don't know. So we just leashed an alien, which was interesting. The game has all kinds of fun stuff that you can do. I don't think I want to go to war with that particular, or go after that alien. Probably just camp here. Maybe we'll start bringing you up. Have you deal with it. I'm going to bring anybody else up. You know, maybe I should start moving you up that direction. You're going to continue moving towards our city. Yeah, you can keep on going that way. We'll have you just sit there. Production-wise, what do we want to do? You know, we could build trade convoys. We did pick up our... 10th population. At 10 population, you do get it. You do have the opportunity where you can pick up another trade convoy. And I'm imagining that the two cities we took over also have no current trade convoys because we just kind of wiped them out. Stop doing that. I don't want you to auto renew. Let's actually go take a look at these cities real quick and see what they're doing. So we did set them up as a puppet, so that means we can't actually go and control too much of them. But we can go in here and look at them. What do they have left? An old earth relic. So we apparently, during our warmongering, ended up destroying pretty much all their useful buildings. A little sad at that. Which means we're going to have to start fresh with them, especially with all those health buildings. However, their population is pretty good, so we should be able to build fast when we decide to do that. Let's see, they're in resistance for one more turn. These guys aren't in resistance anymore. I'm thinking I want to go after Jiang Seng first and maybe get some workers down here and improve these tiles before we actually annex them. Anyways, we'll take a look at that in the next video. I'd like to thank you all for watching. Civilization Beyond Earth, Rising Tide Expansion. Um, so now you know how a war works, how you go to battle. And you can see uh, how I kind of estimated things out. And decided who you know what I think I could take each city with what it would require the amazing part is we did not fight a single unit of theirs their defenses were so bad that I, I guess I don't even know if they've been at war with people I haven't really been paying attention to that but you know it was a fairly quick and easy war and you know the difficulty level playing at normal difficulty probably was a, a major factor but so anyways, we picked up two cities. We have lots of unhealthiness now, so that will be our next focus in the next video. Um, I think we'll keep on going just to see how this goes and trying to see how we deal with certain situations like this. So, you know, we conquered two cities. Now we need to figure out how we can get back into a productive mode as right now we're suffering.
minus 42% growth in cities. You know, our culture is reduced, science reduced, production is reduced just a little bit. But, you know, it's really not that bad. In Civ 5, we'd have all types of crazy things going on. We'd have our citizens revolting. We'd have all these barbarians running around our lands. So, as you can see, this game is a lot more forgiving when you go below your happiness, your zero happiness, or even, you know, negative 10, negative 20. Anyways, catch you next video. Thanks for watching.